last decade, Subaru owners have flocked to the magical land of ethanol tuning for easy and reliable power. And with the new VBWX showing that it can really make some high numbers with small modifications in a tune, ethanol has become a hot topic with those owners as well. But I've seen online a lot of misinformation between flex fuel tuning and ethanol or ethanol blend tuning whether it be Facebook groups or owners or somebody that's really heard one thing from one person and kind of spouts it off as the truth, looking at you, there's a lot of different things that you need to know about how to run ethanol or flex tune with your VB or if you could even do it. So today we're talking about all the questions that you have or could think of for flex fuel tuning on your VB WX. Now, if you don't understand the benefits of running ethanol or a ethanol blend tune in your car, we actually made a video with our shop tuner, Kevin, you could see that right up here. We go through all the kind of ins and outs of running ethanol, good and bad. Another thing to note is we are filming this at the end of June, 2024. And there are a lot of companies who are bringing new products to the market for this topic itself. So we'll be sure to do videos and update you guys as those come out. What's the difference between ethanol and flex fuel? So this is actually the reason I'm making this video is I've actually talked to three different VB owners in the last week and kind of explained the differences because each of them weren't quite sure what what each one of these were. So with ethanol tuning, this is filling your car up with either E85 or some sort of ethanol blend and then getting the car tuned for that specific ethanol concentration. This could be E40, E60, E85, or anything in between. The E is just ethanol and the number is the percentage of ethanol concentration in the fuel. Now, the car does not actively monitor what ethanol concentration is in your tank or feeding your engine. And just like putting 87 octane in your 91 or 93 car, if it's not actively looking at the fuel concentration and adjusting the kind of inputs the car has on how it's running, this could result in damage to your engine. Now, one thing that could happen is the fuel that the car is tuned to run is a higher octane rating than what you have in it. Even with ethanol, ethanol actually increases the octane of the fuel. What would happen is the car would pull more timing and can induce knock, and knock can lead to premature wear of the cylinder walls, the pistons, and the bearings in your engine. At the end of the day, it's super important to run a similar ethanol content with an ethanol specific tune. Our tuner Kevin recommends within about 8% of what you're tuned for. So if you have E85, it's probably safe to go to like 77, but below that you will start to see some issues with the tune. Now flex fuel tuning is where the ECU actively monitors what kind of fuel it's being fed and then changes the tune based on that reading. Now this means you could fill up with 93 octane gas, you could put E85 in or any sort of thing in the middle, you could mix the two up, slosh around, you're on a road trip and say you're running some really nice ethanol fuel to a cool event and on the way home you have either run out or don't want to spend a lot of money on it, you can just fill up a 93 and you're good to go. Now some factory vehicles come equipped with flex fuel. Everyone's seen like uh, the GM cars that say flex fuel on the, the back badge or you may even seen a lot of Subaru owners or other owners that put that on their Subaru to be cool and witty. Unfortunately, no Subarus came equipped from the factory with flex fuel, but some models you can get a flex fuel system for. Now unfortunately, right now there are no current flex fuel options for your VBWX using the factory ECU. But we'll talk about how you can run ethanol next. Can I run ethanol on my VBWX? Yes, you can run ethanol or an ethanol blend on your VBWX. There's a few different ways you can do that. The first option you have is Cobb with your Cobb access port. Now, the access port is a really unique tool that you can use to tune your car, monitor live data, as well as do data logs in order to record certain incidents your car might have or performance metrics that you could send to your tuner. We have these on our website, circuitdemon.com. I don't know if you knew about that, but now you do. Now the other thing that the access port has is map switching. So in this scenario with ethanol, say you want to run an ethanol tune, that's no problem. You can either get an OTS map or an e-tune or a pro dyno tune for your chosen ethanol content. And if you do run out of ethanol and you find yourself needing to get regular gas, you can just switch your map with your access port. We'll talk more about that later. Now there's also the Burger Tuning JV4. The JV4 does have a pre-made E85 map. Now I'll be honest, I don't know a lot of tuners that do custom tunes for the JV4 and I'm not super familiar even though I owned one. I really didn't look like too far into I guess its capabilities but I do know that they have an E85 map for the JV4. The last option would be some sort of aftermarket ECU. The most popular for the VBWX is going to be Mo Tech. I'm doing a lot of eluding here, but we'll talk about that more in just a bit because there's, there's a little bit of a cost prohibitation to that. But Burger Tuning sells a flex fuel kit for the VB. Now this is where I find a lot of the confusion coming from. And I do think it's just down to the terminology that they use 
for that kit. Now we did have a local customer come in for a tune on their VB that had an access port and purchased this burger tuning fuel it ethanol kit or a flex fuel kit as they called it. What this kit is, is just an ethanol sensor that reads the ethanol content going in the fuel feed line. And then you have an app on your phone where you can monitor that ethanol content live. Now this is not flex fuel as it does not connect to the actual car's computer or the access port and it's simply just an ethanol gauge. But I do need an ethanol gauge to run ethanol right? No, you don't. But I would recommend monitoring the ethanol content you're currently running in some way. Now, ethanol gauges are really easy to use. It's just a digital display that shows you the ethanol content currently in the car. The only issue with that is at that point, you've already filled the tank. So if you're out of that window or that range of ethanol content you should be running, you probably have to burn some off by driving really conservatively until you can fill up either with more ethanol or more gas. You can use a shaker test, which I have here. We do sell these. This is what I use when I start started first running ethanol like 12 years ago. And all this is, is a graduated cylinder. It has some markings here. You fill up to the bottom line with water and then you fill the rest with whatever ethanol you're testing. So if you're at the gas station, what I would do with this is I would bring a small bottle that was big enough for the filler neck of the gas nozzle, put a little bit in there and then put it back on the gas pump. I'd pour enough in to fill a line. You shake it and then you just let it settle. And you'll actually see kind of the water and the ethanol split apart and show you what the current concentration is. Now you are doing like a science experiment right at the pump. A lot of people, if it's like a busy gas station, might get annoyed. You might get a little bit on your hands. It's not super easy uh, right there and then, but it is a great way to know what you're putting in your car before you put it in. So what's stopping me from sipping some E? Now I'm a big proponent of ethanol tuning. I have felt the effects first hand and gotten a lot more power than a gas map for relatively no cost at all besides the tune. But there are some things that you need to know about ethanol specifically for your VBWX. Shelf life. Now ethanol is hygroscopic. What that means is that it absorbs water even out of the air. So if you're going to let your car sit for a few weeks, say you're going out of town, it's advised that you try to switch the fuel about every two weeks. That means burn through a tank. We'll talk about why that's so easy in just a moment. But if you are going to be storing the car over the winter like we do up here in New York, then I would strongly advise getting the ethanol out of the tank and putting 93 in for that. Not only is water bad in your tank and the engine ingesting it, but it can also lead to some issues like your injectors getting rusty or clogging, which we actually have seen here at the shop before. Fuel economy. Now we talked about burning ethanol quickly just a moment ago. Ethanol has less power in the fuel or less energy in the fuel. So it needs more fuel to make up for that. Most people say about 30 to 40% more than normal gasoline. So expect to burn about 30 to 40% more than you normally would per tank. Direct injection. Now, this is probably the Achilles heel of the VBWX currently. A lot of tuners are saying that they're making big numbers with upgraded turbos and they're using the factory fuel system. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think that they're making like 600 horsepower plus. I really just don't see it. We have a mainline Pro Hub dyno and a local customer came by with an ethanol VBWX. We tuned it and we were pretty much maxed out at E60 and it was making like the mid 400 range. Now we have a mainline dyno and the numbers on that, there's no correction. It can't be messed with. I think to be honest, a lot of the numbers that you're seeing like in the 600s or 700s for the VB on factory fuel, I don't think they're accurate. We'll say that much. Now let's talk about why that is with the VB. So they chose direct injection. A lot of manufacturers are nowadays for better fuel economy and better emissions for newer standards coming out. With port injection, you can flow fuel even if the valves are closed, but with direct injection and having the direct injector in the combustion cylinder, there's only a small window that it has to fire or vaporize the fuel until combustion starts. Now, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of all of this, but basically as RPMs increase, that time becomes shorter and shorter and shorter, or there's a point where it just can't get enough fuel because of the timing that it has to get the fuel in the cylinder. Now, although ethanol can provide a lot more power, you need more of it in order to do that. And you can only make as much power as you have fuel flow for. Fuel system support. So you're probably asking me, why don't I just get bigger injectors or a bigger pump or something like that? Now with direct injection, you have two fuel pumps. You have the lift pump, which sits in the tank. You have the high pressure fuel pump, which sits towards the engine. And then you have the direct injectors, which sit in the engine head and go into the combustion cylinder. For these, there's only one upgrade you can make, which is the lift pump, which does help, but there is currently no other upgrades for the high pressure fuel pump or the direct injectors themselves. Now, I know Nostrum is making an upgrade right now. They're actively developing those and they do have them for the VAWX, which is the FA20 motor, but currently you cannot run those in the 
VBWX, at least without some sort of modification, which I haven't really seen anyone talk about. Other fuel upgrades that you're probably thinking about is some sort of port injection controller like Reflex. And I know that they have a Reflex controller for BMW motors. All that is is like a secondary or like a piggyback injector system that works in conjunction with direct injection. But currently there's no option for that for the VB. We also talked about Motec being an option, but that's about $8,000 and that's not even including the tune. It's not including any sort of fuel upgrade or the port injectors and secondary fuel pump. You would need to run that setup. How can I safely switch from gasoline to ethanol? So in order to do this, you will need an E85 or an ethanol blend map as well as a 91 or 93 map. And if you are doing upgrades to your car and want to get a tune for that, you will need to get a map for 91 or 93 and ethanol if you want to switch back and forth. Now you can get those through us at circuitneiman.com. We have different options for OTS maps. We also have our tuner, Kevin or K Nasty, who is on the keys with an e-tune. Now the process that our tuner K Nasty recommends is that you go to the gas station with at most an eighth of a tank. You're going to fill up with the new fuel that you desire and then restart the car with the current tune that's on the car for about one to two minutes of just idle time. Don't drive the car. This will allow the fuel that was in there to circulate through the feed line. And then at that point, you're going to turn the car off. You'll switch your map to the new fuel that you just put in the car. And then you can gently drive for about five minutes. After that point, you should be all set to blast off. In summary, ethanol is a great way to extract extra power with very little cost. And even Phillips, ethanol is typically going to be less expensive than a 91 or 93 octane. By running an E60 tune, you won't need as much fuel flow as E85, but you will gain a lot of the positive attributes that ethanol has to offer. So an ethanol blend like E40, E60 might be a better option for your VBWX, depending on your power goals and what modifications you really want to chase after. Now, a practical application of this would be to find a marker point. Let's say you fill your tank up to a quarter of a tank or a half a tank with regular octane gas and then fill the rest up with E85 and then get tuned on that. Now, this is easily repeatable and depending on the fuel quality of your local E85 equipped station, you won't have to shake or test or test ethanol all the time if it's relatively stable. Now, the last thing I'm gonna cover in this video is a very quick glimpse at another option that VB owners have, which is water meth injection. Now, this is another secondary fuel source which can up the car's power without a lot of these issues we're talking about. Now, expect another video on this very soon when we cover all the intricacies, but water meth is another option that doesn't have the same restrictions as ethanol tuning through the factory fuel system. Now, if you have any questions about this, I want you to comment below or you can reach out to us. We are a business, we are a shop, we sell parts on our website. If you need any parts for your VBWX and you want a tune to go with it, whether it be ethanol blend or a regular octane gas tune, we can do that for you. It's no problem. If you want to come in, have us install it, put your car on the dyno, check that out. We also have another video about tunes. What's the difference between off the shelf, e-tune and dyno tune and which one's right for you. You can check that video out as well and see which is the best way to get that ethanol tune that you're after. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, fill up with this stuff. You know what I mean?